Almeida Theatre, Rescuing One Sister in the Wind and Dust, adapted by Amy Ng, based on Zhao Pener Rescues a Sister Through Seduction by Guan Hanking, directed by Anthony Lau, as part of six artists in search of a play. In a haunted world of illusions and transactions, where a mother can sell her daughter into the life of a courtesan, Yin Zhang is lucky to have the older, more experienced Paner as her sworn sister. Seductress, adventurer, trickster, Paner will stop at nothing to save her sister from a disastrous marriage. Based on the 12th century proto feminist Chinese classic by Guan Han King, Amy Ng's adaptation, Rescuing One's Sister in the Wind and Dust, is a witty, boisterous romp about sisters doing it for themselves. The play is read by a cast of nine actors, six women and three men, who are all of East Asian heritage and wear their own casual clothing, performing with scripts in hand. The performance begins with Elizabeth Chan as Paner. She's in her mid-thirties with long dark hair that's part pulled up on top, with the rest loose. She wears navy wide leg trousers and a loose cream blouse. Frances Meili McCann plays Jin Zhang and is in her twenties. She wears cropped black trousers and a khaki blouse. Her mother, Mother Song, is played by Lords Fabres, who's in her forties with shoulder-length dark hair pulled back off her face and a navy knee-length dress. She also later plays an innkeeper. Yin Zhang's husband-to-be, Zhao Zhe, is played by James Cooney, who's in his thirties with short, dark, wavy hair. He wears black trousers and a khaki shirt. Sky Yang plays Scholar Anne, who's in his twenties with dark hair to just below his ears. He wears black jeans and a t-shirt with a dark shirt on top. Kuang Lok is in his fifties. He first plays a character called Slacker and then a judge. His dark hair is close-cropped with a hint of grey and he wears a black jumper, jeans and trainers. There are three ghosts who take up residence towards the back of the space. They are Tsiu Si Hung, who's in her twenties, Jennifer Lim, who's in her thirties, and Crystal Yu, who's also in her thirties. All have long dark hair worn loose, their ghostly presence added to by the long pale skirts that they wear. The Almeida's auditorium creates a simple backdrop for this rehearsed reading. The bare brick of the theatre's curved back wall is lit in soft tones. The floor nearest the audience is a patchwork of wooden panels. At the back of the space, following the curve in the back wall, are two tiered sections, each just a step higher than the other and a couple of metres wide. There are three chairs set out across the tier at the back. This is where the ghosts will sit, with the other six chairs on the tier below. Spotlight on Elizabeth Chan as Panair. A dance hall, both glamorous and seedy, in a decadent city with a military curfew. Possibly Shanghai in the 1930s. The stage is decorated with red roses, pink balloons, and big cheesy posters for the festival of the weaving goddess. The others arrive. Also known as the Lovers Festival. A young man, James Cooney, as Zhao Zhe approaches. They stand facing each other a couple of meters apart. He stands in silhouette with his back to us as a shot takes in Panair's face. She smiles at him coyly and then eyes him up and down. A young woman, Frances Meili McCann as Jin Zhang, comes near, pauses as she sees them both, then walks quickly between them, smiling at the young man. His eyes turn from Panair to her and he follows her out. Panair watches as they step into the shadows and take their seats. On The pianist needs to go home and it's long past your bedtime. Oh. Oh. It's almost midnight. You'll be caught by the curfew. Who cares? 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 Go home, I'm tired. The swallows have flown home to their nests. The rabbits are snuggling down in their holes. Shouldn't you be nestling up to your wives in the warm stink of the mountain? What about a story? Story, story, story. Let's have a ghost story in honor of Ghost Month. No, why not? This is the month when ghosts return to the realm of the living. 
They're probably right here amongst us. Tell us a love story! A love, love story. story! Love? How boring. Oh, love story, come on. Yeah. Love story, love story, love story. Love story. Fine, a love story about people different but very much like us in a time long ago and happening now in a land which has vanished yet is all too much with us. Lights dim to darkness and then brighten. Jennifer Lim as one of the three ghosts. 10th century China, the old capital. The hour before dawn on the seventh day of the seventh month the Lover's Festival. We are in Ying Zhang's sumptuous boudoir. Mother Song has been waiting for Ying Zhang all night long. Lord Fabarus as Mother Song. Darling, you're back so late, I was worried. Have some old and young at peace. Oh, Mother, you are such a peasant. Joe and I only dine on shark's fin and abalone. He'd die laughing if he ever caught me eating tofu and mashed fish. Ying Zhang, darling. I know Zhao Zhe is handsome and rich and charismatic. Not another word, old woman. I just want what's best for you. You sold me into the trade when I was 10. How was that best for me? Well, we were both sold into service. Except you were just the cleaning woman, and I was worth a lot more. Fresh and 10, maidenhead intact. <laughs> oh, stop <laughs> snuggling. What should I have done? Beat up the five strong men sent to seize your father's assets at his funeral. His only assets? Us? Well, you know I didn't have a choice. Well, no, I do have a choice. I choose to be the wife of a rich and powerful man. His father is the military governor of Zhengzhou. We are just ants to them. They'll grind you to the dust. Don't aim so high. Find an honest man. Your, your, your sworn sister, Pan Air, er, will help. An honest man? Like father? Honest and poor all the days of his life, dying with debts I repaid with my flesh. I am marrying Joe so that my daughter will never be sold into prostitution, mother. <laughs> Turn <laughs> off the waterworks. <laughs> We're both too tired for this. Mother Shrugs put out. Listen. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Joe will ask you for my hand in marriage, and you will formally consent. We are doing this by the book, above board, pucker. You will publish the bans, you will invite people to my wedding, and I will get married like a respectable woman. But the groom's family should be doing the arrangement. We'll have another big banquet in his hometown. Now. Pay attention. Go to the restaurant by the lake and book the great banqueting hall. I want the most expensive package. Gold bowls, silver chopsticks, pleasure boats decked with peacock feathers. When? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow? Yin Zhang, this is ghost month. You're inviting calamity. Can't you wait? Strike while the iron is hot. I finally worked him up to this point. Oh, he didn't want to marry you. Of course he does. You want to be a respectable wife. Let me teach you how to cook, sew. Oh, we need time, Yin Zheng. You think there are no servants in the Joe mansion? I will be waited on, hand and foot. But a respectable wife. People will be talking about my wedding for years. No one would dare question my respectability. I've spoken to the banqueting hall people. They know what I want. But you must be the one to place the actual order. You must issue the invitations. And I will be given away in marriage by a parent. And don't you dare outsource any of this to that slacker sidekick of Panera's. Is that perfectly clear? Whatever you say, mistress. Sweetheart. Zhao Zhe. Dear mother. <laughs> Honourable young master. <laughs> Let's not stand on ceremony. <laughs> Yin Shang is still young, and I have not yet fulfilled my duty to teach her all that a wife needs to know. So please, treat her well. And, and if she has any failings, blame it on me, and don't take it out on her, please. I swear by my wealth, my mother's life, my 
ancestors' tombs that I will treat Yin Zhang well. <laughs> and if I abuse her in any way, may a herd of elephants suddenly manifest from India and trample me to death. <laughs> may I be struck by lightning, may a volcano erupt beneath my feet, may all my food be turned to sawdust in my mouth if I should cause Yin Zhang any sorrow. <laughs> Happy now? Thank you, young master. Make the arrangements. Yes, mistress. Mother sits. God, that was tough. <laughs> what does she know of love? Close your eyes. She does. He opens a Harrods shopping bag by his chair and takes out two dolls in matching red knitted outfits. One boy doll and one girl doll. Now? He holds them out to her. Open them. <laughs> Happy Lover's Day. Oh, thank you, Goddess, for knitting our fates together. We've a bright future for us, Goddess, I pray. Of course you will. Are you sure? Will your parents really accept me? They'll love you. How do you know? What is there not to love? Will we have another banquet as soon as we get to your family mansion? It's not auspicious for the groom to see the bride. I'll see you at the wedding. The three ghosts stand. Cici Hung on the left. Han Er at home, in marked contrast to Ying Zhang's boudoir, it is furnished like a scholar's study, with a rosewood mandarin scroll table, calligraphy and painting on the walls. Pener kneels to light an incense stick. All merciful Guan Yin, in this month, when ghosts visit the realm of the living, I pray for deliverance for these sisters of mine, mired in bitterness, stuck in rage, that they may turn around and return home to you. I pray that they may transcend their attachment to this floating world of illusions and be saved. A chorus, a chorus of, of three, three ghosts appear. Eat, sisters. Crystal you. Hmm, what do we have here? I dined on lobster steamed over a bed of shiitake mushrooms at the banquet of the general's son. The governor loved my dancing and sent an eight treasures duck stuffed with red dates and pulled mm. barley. Not bad. Plum blossom wine. Sorry, sisters. It's just simple home cooking tonight. We are very grateful. One gets tired of banqueting food. Not me. <laughs> I'd give the, the ghost of my right eye if I could only have a slice from the tender neck of a suckling pig. Old and young apiece, I love this dish. Tofu and mashed fish. My mother used to make this. I don't mean to be tight. I'm just saving up. I want out. Didn't we all? Are you getting married? Oh, good men are rarer than gold dust. Never say never. You were born under a lucky star. The kindest, the smartest of us all. You have built up very good karma. You wouldn't come to a sticky end like us. If not marriage, then what? I'll buy me a... Little cottage in the countryside. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Roll rice? <laughs> Pick peaches? Uh, this city <laughs> is doing my head in. Dirty, dangerous, decaying. It's still the most beautiful city in the world. Lacquered roofs, vermilion gates. Grand palaces, glorious gardens. It's a piss pot. Uh, language, Penner. Living off past glories, long past its prime. Like me. This early. Mistress Panner! Look at you, girl. Men beating a path to your door before breakfast. Sky Yang as Scholar Anne steps forward. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Scholar Anne, brother-in-law, come in. Not brother-in-law, never brother-in-law. Oh, Mistress Panner, would that I were your brother-in-law, but it will never come to that. Uh, calm down. What happened? Yin Zhang is getting married to Zhou Shi. What? Isn't she engaged to you? Yes! The little... My Yin Chang! My muse! She reflected back my deepest, barely articulated thoughts and transmuted them into poetry. <laughs> when I plucked on the zither beneath her window at night, her soul assented, and my zither string broke. <laughs> Yin Chang, soulmate. Zither strings break in the cold night air, idiot. She's like the lotus, emerging untainted from the muck. <clears throat> Rising cleanly above the waters with an unassuming grace. She can only be admired from afar, 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 afar. 
She can neither be sullied nor debased. Of all the dames in the pleasure quarter, Yin Zhang alone was immune to the dazzle of gold. I thought, or do you think she left me because she found out I was a playwright? You're a playwright. Oh, not you two. <laughs> a scholar's got to eat. What's your pen name? I can't tell you that. I don't want my name dragged in the mud. A play playwright's almost as low as a prostitute. The three ghosts hiss at him. Say it. I'm sorry, Mistress Panair. I don't share the common prejudice against your sisterhood. Artists of the pleasure quarters, your taste and refinement put us to shame. Look at this study. It's um, austere, high-minded. Oh, isn't that Wang Tixi's calligraphy? Yes. How can you afford it? Through prostitution. Oh, please don't. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend. I just mean we're both despised, you and I. No offence taken. <laughs> I, too, do not share in the common prejudice against playwrights, if they're good playwrights. My play's been selected for the Ghost Festival performance. Congratulations. Which slot? Early morning. <laughs> we all have to start somewhere. I wouldn't want my play in front of the late night rabble anyways. I prefer an early morning audience. A few refined connoisseurs and your dead sisters in their seats of honour in the front row. What's your play about? A scholar? A courtesan. Yin Zhang. He's talented. She's beautiful. Oh, not another one. Stands and smiles at him. He knows the five books and six classics inside out. He brims with poetry and history. He brims with shit, that's for sure. In the seclusion of his study, his soul communes with philosophers and kings. Then one day, Tian Chang. he meets a maiden. She smiles. So beautiful, like a goddess descended to earth. A ghost. I never understood the big deal about Ying Zhang. Her teeth are crooked and her thighs, orange peel skin. <laughs> Sold by her mother into prostitution, but her heart is pure as a lotus blossom. Whore with a lotus heart? Gullible idiot. They play chess and make music together. Oh, is that all they're making together? But then the greedy mother sells her to a cruel merchant. And the heartbroken scholar takes the imperial exams, wins riches and honors, and buys his lady love out of captivity. Boring. I, I realize it's an archetypal story, but archetypes are archetypes because they're true. The ghosts. I like a good war play myself. The kung fu, the acrobatics. Monkey King. The three sworn brothers. All for one and one for all. And I especially want to honor the dead courtesans with my play. If you want to write about us, write something real. This is real. How many ex-courtesans do you know who are happily married? We spend our lives chasing company and money. We've seen men of all stripes, in all positions, with their pants down. The more respectable the facades, the dirtier the dicks. Even if we quit the trade and get married, how could we possibly look up to them like devoted wives? Playboys and brutes, promising everything, all of them, meaning nothing. But I'm not. My intentions are entirely honourable. I was going to take Yin Zhang as my chief wife. I would never take a concubine to vex her. This is all my fault. Yin Zhang pushed to get married right, straight, straight away. If only I'd said yes. Why didn't I say yes? I was afraid of what my parents would. No wonder she left me. This is punishment for my hesitation. I failed the test of true love. Don't blame yourself. <clears throat> I'm glad you didn't rush it. Ripeness is all. Otherwise, how will you really get to know each other? How yield to each other? We sail blithely across the bitter ocean, seeking a better future, a haven for old age, blindly following human desires while ignoring heaven's will. I believe that heaven is moved by our desires. I don't think heaven cares at all. Fates get woven, your fate and mine, irrespective of our desires. If we really could choose, who wouldn't pick a handsome and clever husband? Look at us, running around in circles, trying to find the perfect mate. Choose someone honest, and he'll turn out to be dumber than an ox. Welcome to the rest of my life. Choose a smart, <laughs> handsome one and you throw you out onto the streets. Where the dogs piss, where the cows shit. And once you fall flat on your face and your eyes finally wide open to the truth, who can you blame, hmm? 
marry early and waste away. What we suffer we cannot share, we cannot tell. Beautiful girls take their passion and gamble high, losing everything in the casino of life. Their faces are always in front of my eyes. I don't give a flying fuck if I never find a husband. No, you, you don't mean that. Surely you don't mean that. You're beautiful, talented. And... I'm not saying I've never thought about marrying a client. But look at us. We could masquerade as submissive wives, but we'd still be vicious, fickle-hearted whores. How could it possibly end well? I don't agree, I don't agree at all. You've no idea what the world is like outside. It's a rat race bowing and scraping to those above you, trampling on those below. In the pleasure quarters, you can drop the facade. It'll let your, down your hair, your true emotions welling up like tears. You get to let down your hair. We do the heavy lifting. It's hard work, let me tell you, other people's pleasure. Oh, you make it sound so sordid. We're sordid, we sell illusions. But what about the buyers? Crazed, brutish, they don't see us as human. They call us leeches, parasites even when we don't ask for money. But we never learn. We just become more and more infatuated. Some enjoy being courtesans. Some settle for being concubines. Housemakers work hard for ephemeral reputations. Sellers of illusions fleece idiots to get rich. Brother-in-law, wait here for me. I'll try to talk her round. <laughs> But don't rejoice too much if I succeed, and don't be too despondent if I fail. I won't stay. I'll go back and wait for news. Take care, Mrs. Panner. He steps back. Indang is seated at her dressing table, making up her face. Shouldn't you be working? I'm done with work. I'm getting married, Sister Panner. I sent Mother out with the invitations. You're top of the list, of course. What a coincidence. I was just about to formally present you with a marriage proposal. Who? Scholar Anne. Him. If I married him, we'll be out in the streets singing for our supper. Oh, lotus blossom, oh, lotus blossom, writs in the mud but pure as snow. Oh, I'm marrying Joe Shu. Aren't you a bit young to be getting married? Too young to marry Joe Shu, but not too young to marry Scholar Anne. Sorry, Sister Panair, that makes no sense at all. Unless you think I should only marry someone you choose. You like Scholar Anne. You've pushed in my way. You just had your arm broken by that lieutenant. You needed someone who'd treat you right. I'm not saying Anne isn't sweet, but he's a boy. Joe is a man. <sighs> That's why you should marry Anne. He'll never be able to get the better of you. But Joe, sure. That's a whole different kettle of fish, Yin Zhang. You're still young. If not Scholar Anne, I can find someone else. I'm sick of it. Mistress this, mistress that. One day I'll be in great distress with pus-filled cysts down you know where. Mistress. Oh, to be a Mrs. Lee or a Mrs. Chen. Even if I died, I'll be a dashing, gallant ghost. Oh, ho! Dashing? <laughs> gallant? How many of our sisters sashay into the homes of the great? only to find that even the servants abuse them. You're better off guarding your hearth, plying your trade until you find a good man. Joe is a good man. How do you know? Well, look at him. Zhao Zhu stands. So handsome in his gorgeous robes. How can I resist him? Dung beetles have glossy shells, but they're still full of shit inside. <laughs> is he going to treat you well? Absolutely. In summer, he fans me to sleep. In winter, he warms the blankets before I go to bed. He buttons up my dresses, fastens my hairpins before I venture out to the great banquets. He's gentle, respectful. That's why I'm marrying him. <laughs> he sits. Let me guess. He also removes the gristle from your meat and feeds you the best bits. He's very attentive. Oh, so he's a good lover. But listen to me. Good lovers don't make good husbands. Good husbands can't be good lovers. They're two different species. <laughs> Why? Because a good lover is a bullshitter. <laughs> Part of the job description. Like us. We trade in illusions. You can't grow old with someone like Joe. Half a year at most, and he'll throw you out like dust in the wind. Joe's servants enter, 
with bottles of wine, a lamb, and red silk. Look, he's paying a proper bride price for me. No noble daughter could command more. We will get married, and I will be Madame Jo. Where are his parents? Are they coming to a wedding? He's marrying you behind their backs. His father's a military governor, for heaven's sake. You can't expect his aged parents to come all the way from Zhengzhou to our wedding. I'm leaving, Panair. I'll start over again in a respectable town. I need to get out. Just look at this dump. Shops boarded up, drunkards sick in the ruins, fear stalking the streets in broad daylight. They'll still smell the whole house and the dance hall on you. Our two hearts will beat as one, and nothing you say will tear us apart. Just because you fancied him yourself? That's a <laughs> lie! <laughs> oh, I have seen the way you look at him. But he chose me, not you. I've outgrown you. Your student has learned her lesson surpassingly well. I know how to flash my dimples, just so. I know how to cock my head, just so. I know how to run my lacquered nail along his arm, turning him to putty. Oh, how have I overtaken you? You are way past your prime. Soon, you'll be reeking with pox and pus, rolling in the dust, the wind whistling past your ears. <laughs> <laughs> this is me you're talking about. Me. The number of times I've rescued you. And I've thanked you and thanked you. How long do I have to be grateful? Shouldn't there be a, a statue of limitations on gratitude? You use gratitude as a stick to keep me in line. I'm not asking for gratitude. Of course you are. You love being the great, compassionate Panair, the Guanyin of the whorehouse. I'm sick of it. Let's settle my debts. How much exactly do I owe you? Fine. My husband can settle the balance. The day will come, Yin Zhang, when you'll see I've spoken the truth. You'll beg me to save you. Don't bother. Even if I were dying, I wouldn't ask for your help. He's, He's here. here! Suck, Suck it, it to him, Panna! Panna. Sister-in-law Panna? Yes. Please, dine with us. <gasps> Why? You think I'm reduced to licking the pots at home? I would like to ask you to formally vouch for my future wife. And who may that be? Song Yin Zhang. Panair looks at Yin Zhang. What do you want me to vouch for? Her skill with the needle? Her prowess in making noodles? Her embroidery? Her homemaking? Her childbirthing? Her child rearing? I warned you. I've closed the deal. I don't need you to vouch for anything. Fine. I'm leaving. The ghosts. <gasps> that girl! Bitch! Demon men snaring fiend! Looking as innocent as a tight lotus bud, but all the while scheming behind your back. Hitch up her skirt and you might find a foxtail, the vixen! She lacks basic human decency, that's for sure. Even a dog knows gratitude. The time was she would look to me for protection. A two-faced siren. Her hateful face she had turned away. She greeted me with joy and respect. Mouth dripping with honey, a sword in her belly. Panna, you're jealous. Jealous? What? Well, I could have had a prince, a general, a high priest. They've all passed through my bed. What's Joe and me a merchant? Scholar Anne. Sister-in-law, could you change Yin Zhang's mind? She's deep in her fever dream. I shall leave immediately to take the imperial examinations. No, stay. Why? Half a year. I give that marriage half a year max. She'll need a shoulder to cry on, and you'll be there. I'm a scholar. If she had been tricked, abducted, forced, I would wait till the heavens crumble and the earth disintegrate. But to get us merchants, sloppy seconds... You owe the inn rent, don't you? You wanted to skip town? Don't. 
It's the economy. No one's buying plays. <laughs> There's an old temple just off Soy Sauce Lane. Go there immediately. I'll get the slacker to steal your books and things from the inn. Camp out at the temple. Stay out of trouble. I'll send for you. He goes. The ghosts look to Panair. What are you going to do? Wait. Joe will throw her out. Dead or alive. Alive, I hope. Hope? You're just going to hope. I can't make her see sense. She needs to go through with it. The fever needs to break. Oh, Yin Zhang. Your scholar lover would have made a respectable woman of you. But you were dazzled by gold and married a playboy instead. Panair sits. In front of Yin Zhang's house, a curtained sedan chair waits with sedan chair bearers. Bye, mother. May Guan Yin, the all merciful, protect you. I'll protect her. Uh, get into the sedan chair. And you? I'll go on horseback. I could ride alongside you. <laughs> Respectable women do not ride horses. But you used to come and cheer me when I played polo. Woman, we've left the whorehouse gates. You do not show your face in public. You're not a street walker anymore. I was never a street walker. Uh, take the longer road around the mountains and enter through the north gate. I don't want you parading through the town centre. Aren't you going to ride with us? He moves back. He's ashamed of me. In unison, the ghosts stand. We, we love recklessly. We marry hastily. We are cast aside casually. Hey, stop. Strongman Chen is out there. You really shouldn't miss this. He can eat and drink hanging upside down. Sorry, mistress. We have got to get a jungjo before curfew. Mrs. to you. I'm not a mistress any longer. Oh, look. There's old Liu with his performing bear. And the acrobat struggling with fire. Stop. I'll buy us all a round of plum blossom wine. Oh. Hawker Wu's out early today. He makes the best silkworm pies in the old capital. Please, stop. We've passed the city gates. A last glimpse of the old capital. The bright tiles of a thousand roofs. Sparkling like fish scales. I will be respectful. I will be respectable. We're crossing the yellow river. Like, like bubbles, bubbles on, on the, the river, river we, we dissipate. dissipate. Never, Never to see mother or father, father again. again. Parted like sun and moon, dusk and dawn, the North Star and the Southern Cross. I'll have a manor house. I'll have landscaped gardens, acres and acres of them. I'll have deep courtyards with fountains. I shall be the patroness of the arts. Poets and artists will flock to my brilliant salons. We shall serenade the moonlit snow on festival nights. We fawned over the men with the big houses, but they crushed us because we reeked of the dance hall. We went to the long shafts to try to buy our divorces, but they'll rather see us dead than divorced. We decorated our chambers for a marriage to outlast heaven and earth. But once we stepped over the threshold, it was over. Eyes popping with terror, like a fish that slipped the net. Lips pursed, frantic, like a turtle dove that's lost her egg. Enough! We're in Zhengzhou. Where is everyone? Why is it so dark? It's just nightfall. Where are the tea houses with the bright lanterns at the entrances? Or the shops with illuminated displays? Where are the street lamps? This is not the old capital, mistress. Mrs. to you. Where are you taking me? Don't think I can't see in the dark. Whores are like cats. Nine lives nocturnal. Narrow alleyways. People squatting in the doorways, the smell of fermented tofu. How dare you take me to the slums? Master Joe has rented rooms for you here. Uh, am I not to live in the Joe Mansion? You can transplant a street-side willow into the Imperial Gardens, or a hall into the families of the respectable. They put up with us when their sons are still infatuated, then cast us out like dust into the howling wind. We fall into traps laid by men. And all our virtues and kindnesses are blotted out with one stroke of the brush. We're nearly there. Master Joe is waiting. I have an idea. 
He won't be able to resist this. Inzan draws the curtains. She starts tossing out clothing onto the streets. The sedan chair rocks back and forth. What's going on? Are you trying to create a scandal? It's the young mistress, sir, not us. We have no idea what she was doing. In Jiang? Joe lifts the curtain of the sedan chair with his whip and peers inside. They step back. The scholar Anne faces an innkeeper. Two months later, an inn. The innkeeper is shaking scholar Anne. Where's the money? If you will just wait. You owe us two weeks' rent. My play's worth more. Your script is worth nothing. You'll work off your debt. I'll be very happy to grace the walls of this establishment with my calligraphy. You'll wash dishes. I'm a scholar! I cannot wash dishes! You can tell that to the judge. But what's all this? This man tried to pay his rent with a play script. Are you the owner of this inn? I am. Then tell your man here that he has no right to manhandle a scholar. A future high official, I was on my way to the new capital to take the imperial exams. He has been here for two weeks. He has his eye on that new girl in the brothel. Oh, the one who can dance on the points of her toes. Mm. Well, no wonder you have your eye on her. My heart bleeds at the thought of her maiden head sold to the highest bidder. Ah, you want to rescue her from the evil madam. Take her maiden head yourself. No, I, I'm not... It's not like that. I was in love with another courtesan. She was innocent, pure, soulmate. Then she ran off with a merchant. The brothel is all corrupting. If I could only stop another soul from falling. We suffer from the same affliction. I too was in love with a courtesan. Did she abandon you for another? No. I married her. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. We chase desires in this floating world, but all our schemes are in vain. Fate is implacable. Prostitutes are prostitutes. Wives are wives. What was I thinking to take that whore home? I thought I was getting a fine pedigree horse, but I've ended up with a lame ass instead. You know what happened on the very first day? We were on the way home when her sedan chair started bopping up and down. I lifted up the curtain with my whip, and there she was, somersaulting in the nude. I mean, on the streets of Zhengzhou, what was she thinking? That this was some pole dancing orgy? That's when I knew it wasn't gonna go well. So, as soon as she crossed my threshold, I whipped her 50 times to break her in. You could have killed her. Mm, you can't kill a whore. They're like weeds. You need to show a woman who's boss. Your lady love ran off with someone else. If you'd been a man, she wouldn't have left. He was born rich and I'm poor, that's all. <laughs> you don't have to throw money at a whore. Sometimes they even fling their ill-gotten gains at your feet as long as you're a man. In my extensive experience, whores don't actually respect lily-livered scholars who bleat about love all day. Life is not an opera. Women want a man with a dragon in his loins who fucks and fucks and fucks. Admit it. Hmm? Do you just want to redeem that 13-year-old debutante? Or do you want to fuck her like a man? Uh, oh, come on! You know he wanted. Say it! I want to fuck her! There's the spirit! <laughs> Fate has brought us together. I like the look of your face. Mm. <laughs> you can stay on in my inn until you fuck your lady love. Just uh, leave your donkey in my stall as security. Uh, my donkey? I need it to get to the imperial exams. Ah, and you will, you will, just as soon as you've conquered her maidenhead. But sell a few plays and the donkey's yours again. <laughs> look at your face. <laughs> Very auspicious. I can see from your broad forehead you'll ride off into the sunset on a donkey and return on a fine stallion with riches and honour. You shall have the pick of the cherry-lipped dames, their raven black clouds of hair sweeping over your naked chest. So what are you waiting for? 
Once more unto the breach, dear friend, once more. Once more. <laughs> Scholar Anne goes. I swear you make more money trading in donkeys than you do from this inn. Idiot. Do you think I open this inn to make money? I want first pickings of any fine doll passing through town. Come straight to me when a babe walks into my parlour. Where do I find you? In the whorehouse. And when you're not in the whorehouse? Try the gambling house. And when you're not in the gambling house? Try the jailhouse. Indung's humble new abode. Grandma Wang, the neighbor, is helping Indung <laughs> sew a quilt. Thank you for teaching me. Didn't your mother teach you how to sew? No, she did all the sewing. I wouldn't learn. You try that side. The two women kneel on the quilt, each sewing up a seam. It's important to have a good quilt for the winter. Where are you from? The old capital. Ah! My son goes there every week. He sells soy sauce that I brew myself. We make it with water from the local mountain springs, which gives it a special mineral flavor. I miss home. It will get better. Did your husband like the fish? He said it smelt rank and threw it at me. Did you steam it with ginger? No. But ginger or, or dried orange peels get rid of fishy smells. Didn't your mother tell you? I'm sure she did. I didn't pay attention. I made some old and young at peace. Why did not you uh, serve it to the young master tonight? My mother used to make that. Mm. Yin Zhang sews the wrong seam, and the two women are enclosed inside. <laughs> the sound of a trotting horse approaching. He's back. Where are you, you little cunt? <clears throat> I'm, I'm in here. He holds a riding crop. What are you doing? I tried sewing up the quilt. Is there nothing you can do right? Oh, don't, please, please, please. Are you saying you don't deserve a whipping? I deserve it. I deserve it. But our neighbor, Grandma Wang, is in here too. Don't beat her. You've sewn up the neighbor too. Grandma Wang cuts the stitches and the two women climb out. Yes, young master, the new mistress is trying very hard. She will make a fine seamstress. We're, we're nearly done. You, you must be hungry. Do you want some old and young at peace? Don't bother. Sight of her spoils my appetite. I'm going drinking. <clears throat> Young missus, don't take it too much to heart. Sometimes new husbands like throwing their weight around. Men are like a pan of milk. They boil over easily. You just have to learn to get the flame right. Try to get pregnant soon. He promised me the stars, and the moon, and a palace, and servants. Men. Oh, I should have listened to my sister. My mum. He'd rather kill me than divorce me, he said. So who's talking about divorce? I will surely die at his hands. What about your father, your brothers? Can't they intervene? But my sworn sister is very clever. If anyone can get me out of this hell, she can. You said your son goes to the old capital every week. Yes, he's off tomorrow. Can you take a letter for me? Of course. I'll get the letter writer. Uh, no need. In Jung takes out brush and paper and starts writing. You can write. You, a, a woman. I could even make this rhyme or write the entire thing in riddling couplets. I know six different ways of writing the character for honor. At least I'll make a poetic ghost. <laughs> In Zhang seals up the letter. Please, tell your son to hurry or I'll never see them again. Grandma Wang leaves Xin Zhang, who turns her gaze upwards. Guan Yin, protector of prostitutes and outcasts, save me. Paner and the ghosts. Paner examines her bruised neck in the mirror and wraps some ointment on the bruise. What happened? I sang at the Duchess's birthday banquet. The Duke caught me afterwards. But you've retired. Yes. It was even in the contract. I sell smiles, I sell songs, I do not sell love. 
I'm sure the Duke wasn't interested in love, just sex. Entertainers, prostitutes, it's all the same to them. I am an artist. Of course you are. I can't do this anymore. Maybe I should just get married. Mm. Compassionate Guan Yin, help me curb my passions and control my tongue. Tongues are starting to wag. You know people, they always need to gossip about something. What do they say about me? The usual. That you're a has-been. <sighs> this forehead is still smooth. These lustrous strands still raven black. But the sparkle's gone. They say you're like a mechanical doll dragging yourself from banquet to banquet. Enough! I should just walk away from it all. But my desires are oceanic. My passion's still strong. Who's there? Mother Song. A peddler brought me this letter from Yin Zhang. He said he's a neighbor and she's being beaten to death. What can we do? So it has come to this. Yin Zhang, I warned you. Read it, please. Just read it to me. Yin Zhang stands facing Pan Er. Yin Zhang respectfully bows to our elder sister and mother. Since we parted, everything you predicted has come true. The way of a fool is right in her own eyes. Only she who heeds counsel is wise. He whips me day and night. Come quickly and we may still see each other face to face. Delay and you'll never see me alive again. Yours ever. Your sister, Ying Zhang. Pane looks back at Mother Song. What shall we do? What can we do? I warned her when she could have still got off her high horse. My duty is done. I'm washing my hands of the whole affair. You can't just stand by and watch her die. She said she wouldn't ask for my help even if she were dying. Well, she's begging you now. She's sorry, she's made a huge mistake. I really don't see how I can help. But you're her sworn sister. You bowed eight times before Guan Yin and swore an oath. All for one and one for all, like the three sworn brothers. Panetti and Zhang. The night, five drunken soldiers wanted you at once. I took them on and you escaped. The night you were hounded by the loan sharks, I paid your debts. When you had the flu and the madam made you work, I took on your shift. When you teetered on the edge of the roof and threatened to jump, I climbed up and led you down by the hand. I've done my duty by you. We're quits. You know what people say? No solidarity amongst whores. Don't prove them right. Where is her solidarity with me? She was scared. She, she had nightmares. She dreamt of being a starving ghost, roving the back alleys, drinking the dregs of cheap wine with no one to mourn her. We've all had that nightmare. We are that nightmare. But we don't all lash out against our sisters. Yin Zhang's the one who knows no solidarity against whores. Pane, you are the, the most compassionate, the smartest, the strongest of us all. Show mercy on her. Please, please rescue Yin Zhang. You're her mother. You gave her permission to marry. Well, Zhao swore a deadly oath to treat her well. Which man doesn't swear to die gruesomely if he breaks his vow? You're wise, Panair, and you can see through all deceit. Have pity on us who are us is still mired in delusion. When she was first sold to the brothel, I told you to just take her and run. Pick tea, weave silk, anything would have been better. I was a coward. I failed her. When my husband died, I was, I was like a chicken turned out amongst a sky full of hawks. But you grew up under the hawks and you have survived. Like the monkey king with the 72 different shape-shifting tricks. You can tweak the heavenly empress nose and still get away with it. There is no demon you, that can foil you. No river too wide for you. Time and again, you have rescued so many of us from disasters. And what good did that do? You all came to a sticky end anyway. Like giving coins to a beggar. They just die another day. You are like the goddess of mercy herself. You never give up. Well, the song drops to her knees. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm like a goddess made of mud. I, I disintegrate in the rain. I can't even rescue myself. Panair with her. Spring comes every year, and 
My spring will never return. Look, the first silver in the black, like the first yellow strand in the weeping willow. All I want now is to save enough so I won't be turned out on the streets in my winter. He whips me, day and night. Come quickly and we may still see each other face to face. Delay, and you'll never see me alive again. Look, here's some silver. My entire keep a roof over my head in old age fund. Go buy her a divorce. He'd rather kill her than grant a divorce, the peddler says. Raining blows on her, the blood dripping from her wounds. What do you want me to do? I do not know. Do something. His father is the military governor of Zhengzhou. I could go to him. I could threaten to kill myself and haunt him for eternity if he doesn't let Yin Zhang go. You've been watching too much opera, Mother Song. Uh, do you think a man who dares marry in Ghost Month will be afraid of ghosts? You'll kill yourself for nothing. I killed myself, haunted him night and day. He couldn't even see you. How do you know? He married me after she... <coughs> At least I would have tried. Penna looks up briefly. I have an idea. She whispers to Mother Song. That's really risky. Life is risky. But what if... Don't worry. This is Panair you're talking about. With nine lives like a cat. 72 transformations like the Monkey King. I will return intact like a fresh autumn rose. That lecherous asshole will frock at his mouth when he sees me. <laughs> Where's that peddler? Is he still here? But we, he's just about to leave. Give me a brush. I'll write her a letter now. Hold tight, Yin Zhang. I'm on my way. This is the plan. Don't let the cat out of the bag. Remember who you are, a courtesan of the old capital. Beautiful, accomplished, the pinnacle of womankind. Don't ever say there is no honour amongst walls. Hopefully this will get you tonight. Take it to the peddler. Mother Song bows and leaves. I shall slip on my brocaded robe again, do up my hair with jade and gold, Drape pearls over my forehead, stain my lips a deep red, infuse my body with the scent of jasmine. This painted face will save you, you poor whipped scapegoat. I am Panair, courtesan of the old capital. Your cruel lover will not escape my, my diaphanous hands. I'm back in the game again. She steps back, the ghosts. Outside Penair's home, the slacker enters with two horses and a cart. He has a black eye. The ghosts climb up onto the cart. Kong Lok as the slacker. Mistress Panair! And here I was itching with anxiety that this time you've retired for real. What happened to your eye? A souvenir from an enraged husband. I was sneaking a letter from his third concubine to a neighbor. Occupational hazard. Maybe you really should take up an honest living. Doing what? Water carrier? Sedan bearer? <laughs> this is a lot more fun now that you are back. I was bored to death when you were not around. <laughs> You're not getting younger, you slacker. But you are eternally young, Mistress Pano. The body doesn't lie. My body is falling apart. You look exactly like you did when you first emerged on the scene. What, 15 years ago? <gasps> no, you look even more beautiful now. Amazing what good cosmetics will do. A very thick layer of it. Uh, that's the difference between us and respectable women. They powder it on lightly, we lay it on thick. <laughs> and we will never be anything but dust blown about in the wind. But why would you even want to be respectable? Behind the walls of the big mansions, they lead lives of quiet desperation. Princesses, duchesses, military wives, you name it. Is this true? 
Uh, is there a democracy in death? Do you see imperial princesses wandering in the back streets as hungry goats? As if! They're so proud of their big offerings and their big graves. But the Countess, remember? The one who was secretly strangled? Her sons kept on burning whole suckling pigs to her. But she can't get anything down her tied up throat. <laughs> Wives lower their eyes in the presence of their husbands. They never dare raise their voices to their in-laws. They don't have any money, even if they brought huge dowries to their marriage. <laughs> they go loony with religion, or nag their children, or beat their servants. Look at you, free, accomplished, beloved. The sparkle in your eyes, the wit of your talk. The flame of life burns so bright in you. Why would you want to be anyone else but Mistress Parnell? Still the same old silver-tongued slacker. It's all true, Mistress Parnell. So you think I'll seduce my man like this? You are drop-dead gorgeous. <laughs> Even I turn into a puddle of sludge when I see you sachet. <laughs> oh, you're so Camp. <laughs> oh, right. Enough chit chat. We're on a mission from Guan Yin. Panna mounts her horse. The slacker hitches up the cart onto his horse. Standing side by side. This weighs a ton. <laughs> <laughs> Just hitching a ride. I like that we're riding in style. No donkey cart for me, thank you. And I can hardly rescue her damsel in distress on a donkey. So who's the lucky man? What? Your future husband. I'm not getting married. Then why ask me to get wine, lamb, and a red silk? I thought you were proposing to someone. Oh, but I am. Ooh. Zhou Xia. He's quite a dish. He's beaten Ying Zhang to death. So hurry up, slacker. Oh, gallant woman riding to your sister's rescue on a white horse. She rushed headlong to her doom, where angels fear to tread, into the labyrinth, springing the trap. We are all lost in the labyrinth of fear. So hurry, slacker, hurry. Do not tarry. He whips me day and night. Come quickly and we may still see each other face to face. Delay and you'll never see me alive again. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. We've left the old capital. We're making good time. Good. I can't wait to give him a taste of his own medicine. You had a thing for him. I did not. Everyone had a thing for him. I nearly peed in my pants the first time I saw him striding through the city gates like the rising sun he was. I don't care if he were the most handsome man in the history of the world. When I think about how she went after him, how he laid on the flattery, I should have just left them to it. Even now, I'm tempted to turn back. But I'm sorry for her old mother. I've travelled far and been friendless, and I know what it's like to crave the next high. Poor love junkie. Oh, but what if he doesn't want to marry you? I'll exhale my flattery into his ear. He'll abandon her and come to me, soiling his own nest. He'll divorce her. But what if he won't divorce her? I will pinch, poke, embrace and... Fondle him until his body tingles and his senses are numb. I'll dab sugar on his nose where his yearning tongue can't reach. Oh, I have a thousand irresistible tricks up my gossamer sleeves. We are in Zhengzhou. A gate to... Memorialise a chaste widow who refused to marry after her husband's death. A pillar to commemorate a virgin who died resisting rape. What is it with this town and women not having sex? <laughs> what a terrible place. The mansion's so bleak. Gates locked, fortified. The streets so wide to move troops rapidly. People hurrying along, each alone, eyes straight ahead. No big chattering groups. No pleasure-seeking men and women. Policemen on every street corner. A labyrinth of respectability and fear. Oh, Yin Zhang. Better a hungry ghost in the old capital than this death in life here, buried in the mansions with deep courtyards and high walls. The slacker pulls up at the inn. 
A little bird whispered to me that this inn belongs to Su Zhou Xu. It's a trap for women, of course. Of course. We're staying here. I know. The door of the inn opens, and the innkeeper kicks out Scholar Anne. Scholar Anne? I told him to stay in the old capital. Away with you! But my donkey! You've forfeited it. Let me speak to the owner. The owner does not want to speak to you. But he sympathizes with me. Huh. I need my donkey to get to the capital to take the exams. A nobody like you, you'll never get anywhere in the exams. I know six different ways of writing the character for love. That's impressive. I've written another play. It will more than cover the cost of the donkey. Sell it and bring me the cash. How hot! Get out. Don't block the way of paying customers. Sorry about that. Another scholar is spending his life savings in a whore. Fickleness, thy name is man. This lady has traveled a long way. Please get her the best suite in the inn. Of course. And tell Joe Scher that I'm here. Pathetic. To think I pinned my hopes for Yin Zhang on Scholar Anne. What is it? I'm busy. Master Joe, there's a real babe seeking, asking for you at the inn. Zhao Zhe quickly stands, turns his back to us, hurriedly fastens his flies, then steps towards Bonaire. My, oh my. She's a doll. My, oh my. Yin Zhang really can pick men. What a specimen of a man. What shoulders. What grace in his limbs. What fire in his eyes. Dear mistress, I feel like we've met before. I know people say that all the time, but I mean it. Was it at some inn? You were playing the zither, and I gifted you some burnished silk. To the slacker. Did he gift me burnished silk? He never gifted you burnished silk. I've got it. Uh, once I left Hangzhou after the party and hurried over to the Shanxi for a drink. Didn't I treat you to dinner? Has he ever treated me to dinner? He has never treated you to dinner. You are so intent on new delights, you forget your old loves. Or have your eyes gone dim, as the poets sing? We met on the banks of a river in paradise. But today you deny ever knowing me. I remember you. Xiao Pana. Yes. You're the one who tried to stop my marriage. He grabs his riding crop. <laughs> ah! Don't! I loved her brocade dresses, her fine silk sheets, her gold jewelry, her furs, just so she could marry you. And you turn and beat me? Oh, Joshua, listen to me. Oh, when you were in the old capital, all I heard was the name Joshua from every throat. Wherever I turned, people were singing your praises as of an invisible god because you were so elusive. Wherever I arrived, you had just left. I began to despair of ever setting eyes on you. Then I finally met you. I've been unable to eat or drink since. And just when I was about to declare my love for you, you married Song Yin Zhang and asked me to vouch for her. At first I tried to be magnanimous and help arrange the marriage, but my jealousy boiled over. You might look like a man of the world, but you don't understand women at all. All the things I've brought you, horses, saddles, silk sheets, a rich dowry, and you beat and curse me instead. Slacker, hitch up the horse, we're going home. Uh, if I'd known that you were here to marry me, I'd never have dreamed of beating up this gentleman. You really didn't know? Well, in that case, don't leave. Tarry with me for a few days. Your humble servant will tarry with you for a few lifetimes. A few days later, Panar in bed with Joe. 
off to the outhouse with you, lazy bone. I'm glued to your soft body by ambrosial fluids. Don't be gross. <laughs> the toilet's that way. What's wrong with the golden shower? Oh, the way you're farting sounds more like a mud bath is coming my way. <laughs> Just a parting poke before. <laughs> no, go. Or do you want another spanking on your booty? <laughs> Doe flings on his robe. The belt tears. Oh, hold it! Pan Er gets a sewing kit from a little embroidered bag by the bed and sews the belt on expertly. Meticulous. What handiwork. You're good with the needle. Most courtesans don't have a clue. I'm not most courtesans. I'm every man's dream come true. I can sew and embroider, cook and keep house. I'm filial to in-laws, devoted to children, fair to servants. By day, I'll serve my lord and master respectfully. By night, I'll sport with him in the lascivious bedsheets. Joe tries to get back into bed. Ow! Hanger spanks him playfully on his bottom. Slacker looks over at Panair. Psst! Slacker! You have him eating out of your hands. Move in for the kill. Why? What's the rush? Don't push your luck. This is Joshua you're talking about. Fickle, unpredictable, powerful. I'll get Yin Zhang and you close the deal. I'm like opium. The more he takes, the more he craves. Oh, let's get back to the old capital. I don't like this town. There's no... The intrigue, it's, it's stifling. I'm paying you for your time, aren't I? You actually want to marry him, Panner? He almost beat Yin Zhang to death. I'm in a different class altogether from Yin Zhang. Yin Zhang tried to handle him with her cheap whorehouse tricks. Hmm. You don't treat a fine stallion like an ass. You know what it's really like. How can you even think of marrying him? Life is a comedy. We all have our roles to play. I'll play mine to perfection. Believe me, it'll be easier than the whorehouse. You haven't been home for days. I don't answer to you, bitch. Who's inside? Who's the whore? It's Panair, the old whore. She couldn't get her claws into you back then, so she followed you home. How dare you? Behind Zhao Zhou's back, Yin Shang gives Panair a thumbs up. <laughs> Sharing is caring, Yin Shang. Good women learn to share a man. I'll teach you to meddle in my affairs. I'll rearrange your face, realign every bone in your body. Oh, don't! Are you taking her side? Uh, of course not. She's a spiteful idiot. But look, we fucked for days. You're depleted. Don't waste your energy on her. Look at the way he's fondling his whip. Even a tiger isn't this vicious. I don't want you getting into trouble. What sort of wedding feast would it be with a groom in jail? Who will dare touch me? My father is the military governor of Zhengzhou. I know what this is. You've set this up. You asked her to come here, then whipped her to scare me into submission. Slacker, let's go. No, 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 no. I swear. I, I had no idea this unholy cunt would appear. You, go home or I'll beat you to death right here, right now. Slacker, pack up. Sweetheart, I swear. I had nothing to do with it. it if I'm lying, may elephants trample me to death. Mm. <laughs> then she's a shrew who won't share nicely. She'll never accept me as a co-wife. Get rid of her and I'll marry you. I'll divorce her the minute I get home. Wonderful, let's get you dressed. Uh, sorry. If I'm being crude, but a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. What if I divorced her and you refused to marry me? I'd be out of pocket. But what if we got married and you refused to divorce her? I'll divorce her as soon as you marry me. And I'll marry you as soon as you divorce her. We'll get married now. Uh, innkeeper, uh, bring the wine. No need. Slacker? The mistress brought ten bottles of plum blossom wine. Uh, prepare a lamb. Uh, no need. Uh, the mistress dressed and marinated a year old lamb. Then buy some red silk. No need. Panna turns over the blanket to reveal red silk on the bed. Two lengths of the finest Hangzhou silk from my trousseau. Xiu let's not stand on ceremony. 
What's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours. Look into your heart and weigh up your prospects. Divorce that woman within your gates. Am I not an asset? Sign that divorce paper, and all this is yours, you fortunate man. Innkeeper, prepare the wedding feast. When I see the divorce papers. I need you to take an oath. If you divorce your wife and I refuse to marry you, may I be trampled to death by a herd of elephants suddenly manifested from India. May I be struck by lightning. May a volcano erupt from beneath my feet. May all my food be turned to sawdust in my mouth. There, you force me to swear such a terrible oath. I'll be right back. Zhao Zhu goes back to Ying Zhang. Ying Zhang's quarters. Ying Zhang is laboriously mashing up garlic. Dear husband, would you like something to eat? A uh, brush tea? and paper now. He takes them, writing quickly, and then shows her. Get out. <gasps> a, a, a divorce paper? What have I done? Get out. Whatever I've done. Give me another chance. Is it, is it Panair? Are you divorcing me for that cunt? Out! <laughs> oh, Joshua, you're a fool to let me out of that door. Oh, Sister Panair, you're amazing. Yin Chang, Panair's waiting in the front of the city gates. Don't rush us into the inn. Innkeeper, where is she? She galloped off as soon as you left. She tricked me. Saddle my horse, I'll get her back. The horse is pregnant. Saddle the mule. The mule's about to shit. A donkey then. The donkey's hurt its hoof. I'll run her down into the ground on foot. In front of Ying Zhang's house, Ying Zhang, Panner, and a slacker ride up on their horses. Mother Song runs out. Mother and daughter embrace tearfully. The slacker weeps sentimentally, and even Pang er wipes away a tear. What? If it wasn't for you, sister, we'd never have got Yin Zheng out. Uh, slacker, go up on the roof and keep a lookout. Uh, let me look at that divorce paper. Yin Zhang hands it to her, and Pang er swaps it surreptitiously. Whatever you say about your ex husband, Yin Zhang, he sure knows how to obey his mistress. How meekly he wrote out that divorce certificate. And where's our deceitful old friend now? So proud of his whoring and his clout, but he went down before my torrid eloquence. Joe's coming this way. The woman rushed into the house and they bolt the door. Open the door. I know you're in there, bitch. Joe kicks the door in. He directs Ying Zhang out by her hair. How dare you run away? Son Ying Zhang, you're my wife! So sure you divorced me and threw me out! A divorce paper needs five fingerprints to be valid. Yours only has four. Ying Zhang inspects the divorce paper. Zhao snatches it and from her and chews it. Panair, he's chewing it to bits! You? You're mine too. You both belong to me. Are you out of your mind? You drank my wedding wine. I brought my own. I never touched your wine. But you accepted my lamb. I had my own cooked lamb. That wasn't your lamb. You took my red silk. We fucked on my own red silk. You've given me nothing. You swore you'd marry me. Oh dear, I must have lied. <laughs> have you no fear of heaven? Take a walk through the pleasure quarters. Ask any of my sisters. They swear undying love on the lives of their families over and over again. Their families haven't been massacred. Sure, sure, read my lips. I'm not your wife. I shall never be your wife. You are my wife. You have no divorce paper. Don't worry, Yin Zhang. The paper he swallowed was a forgery. I've got the real one here with all five fingerprints. Joel tries to grab the paper. A herd of stampeding elephants couldn't force me to give this to you. How can this be happening? How is this happening to me? My father is the military governor of Zhengzhou. You're so full of yourself. You believed what you wanted to see. I'll have the law 
on you. He points his crop at them as he leaves. We'd better get Yin Zhang married off today to scholar Anne. <laughs> Yin Zhang, if you're ever tempted to marry again, I'll give this divorce paper to Zhao Xia. But a marriage will protect Yin Zhang. Protect? After all this. Enter policeman. You're arrested on charges of marriage desertion and abduction. Take them to the judge. Mother Song, Yin Zhang, and Pan Air step forward and kneel, facing us. An imposing court. They are made to kneel. No prostitute ever made it out of here alive. You've used up all your nine lives, Panier. Your head will fall today. It was always going to end this way. Was it worth it, Pang Er? Who's making such a racket at this time of the night? I'm watching opera. Which one? The courtesan, scholar, and merchant. My favorite opera. When they come to the part where he's breaking her heart. Your Honor, I demand justice. State your grievance. Your Anna, Your Honor, I am Zhou Xia, son of the military governor of Zhengzhou. And I am Judge Bao, appointed directly by His Majesty the Emperor. My face and heart are made of iron. I am not swayed by high rank or riches. State your case, and I will weigh it up in the scales of justice. Your Honor, I fell in love with Song Yinzhen. A courtesan forcibly sold into the profession. I paid a huge bride price to marry her and took her home with me to Zhengzhou. However, this insatiable madam wanted to extract even more money from Yin Zhang and schemed to get her back. You vicious brothel, madam. I see it all. You sold her to this gentleman here, then schemed to get back the goose that laid the golden egg. Sixty strokes for this old woman. I, I am no brothel, madam. Song Yinzhang is, is my own flesh and blood. Unnatural mother, selling your own child into prostitution. A hundred strokes for this old woman. No, your honor, my mother is old. She will die. Kin me instead. Filial piety is admirable, but your main loyalty is to your husband. Your mother has committed a crime against your husband. Your honor, look at my child's back. He has beaten her to a pulp. Your Zhang, show his honor your, your wounds. There is no law that prevents a man from beating his wife. This is true. The law allows a man to dispose of his property as he will. The law is angular. But human relations should be rounded, not jagged. I would that you honor human obligations more, Mr. Zhou. But I am not his property. I have my divorce paper. Sister Pinel, show his honor the document. Here's the divorce paper he gave her yesterday. Please inspect it, Your Honor. Uh, it's a forgery. That's not my handwriting at all. Give me brush and paper and I'll show you. He writes quickly and shows the judge. <laughs> you have terrible handwriting. But yes, it's not the same script. Your Honor, he's faking it. His handwriting is usually even worse. Your word against his, I'm afraid. And his fingerprints? Your Honor, she waited till I was asleep, then daubed my fingers with ink and pressed them on this forged paper. That's not true. Your word against the son of the military governor. Once again, I am not swayed by rank. But I'm afraid there is no way to establish the facts about this document. It's time for us to step up. You mean, show ourselves? Mm. The camera tilts. The ghosts step forward, heads bent with hair covering their faces. I am the ghost of the courtesan you strangled! I am the ghost of the courtesan you burnt to death! I am the ghost of the courtesan whose neck you broke! I've never seen any of you before! Your hands drip with the blood of so many of our sisters! You will account to heaven for each human life you've taken. Heaven has eyes. Heaven may have eyes, but the law is blind. By law, the word of a prostitute is inadmissible in court. So, go ahead. Summon your whole flock of ghost whores, if you will. Your testimony is worth less than dust in the wind. The ghost shrug. Oh, for fuck's sake. Deal. And sit back down.
Your Honour, uh, you are famed throughout the country for your wisdom. Even the Emperor praises your virtue and discernment. Peace reigns in your jurisdiction. No one bothers to lock their doors at night. You take care of the widow and the orphan. Your Honour, do not let this prostitute speak. She can make black seem white and white black. She trades in flattery. Flattery? Are you implying that Judge Bow is not virtuous, wise and just? Of course not. Speak, woman. Normally, a weak, lowly, fallen woman like myself would never dare speak out against a powerful man. But I make bold to speak because of your reputation. Rich and poor, men and women, aristocracy and commoner are all equal before your impartial judgment. Your honour, Song Yinjiang was already married, but Zhou She abducted her. That's a lie! Zhou She used her, abused her, tired of her and lusted after someone else. By the law, the word of a gentleman counts more than a commoner. By law, the word of a man counts more than a woman. By law, prostitutes and entertainers are outcasts. Their word can never stand against a gentleman. Guan Yin herself once came to earth as a prostitute to show up the delusions of men like you. Your Honour, I'm not asking you to defend a prostitute against a gentleman. But Shosha is no gentleman. <laughs> My father is the military governor of Jingzhou. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but wastes his life in brothels and gambling dens. He's never done an honest day's work in his life. Your Honour, I'm asking you to defend the rights of a worthy gentleman against this vicious liar. I'm talking about Yin Zhang's intended, the scholar. And Ji Shi, he knows the five books and the six classics inside out. He brims with poetry and history. He has communed with philosophers and kings in the solitude of his study since he was a child. And where is he? He's at the capital, taking his exams. He plans to return with honours and raise Yin Zhang up from her debased condition, like a lotus blossom. Emerging untainted from the muck, rising, rising cleanly above, above the, the waters with an unassuming, unassuming grace. grace. She, she can, can only be admired from afar. afar. She, she can, can neither, neither be sullied, sullied nor debased. debased. I see exactly what's happened. Joshua took advantage of Scholar Anne's absence. You've got it all wrong, Your Honour. Scholar Anne is a bankrupt idiot. You conspired with the brothel, madam, to abduct her when Scholar Anne was away. Just like the merchant in the opera. <laughs> if it wasn't for your father, I'll have you executed. Hear me. This is my judgment. Joshua shall receive 60 strokes and perform hard labour with the commoners. Song Yinjiang shall be returned to her husband, Scholar An. Lies. All lies. Your Honour, you've been watching too many bad operas. Hands off me! My father is the military governor of Zhengzhou! This is outrageous! We'd, we'd better find Scholar An. I'll go home, prepare the wedding feast. We'll hold a feast to thank Guan Yin for her mercy. But the wedding... No. What should I prepare? Old and young at peace. Mother Song smiles and nods to Yin Zhang and steps back to her seat. What now? We live another day. That's something. You mean we just carry on as before? It's no different in the great mansions, is it? No. Eternal love is not to be found in either brothel or mansion. But sisterhood? We have sisterhood. All for one, and one for all. Let's go home. It's time. Pan Air smiles at Yin Zhang as she walks past and takes her seat. She turns to us. Time to go home, gentlemen. No! That's a grim tale to oh, Really? It's a, it's a 
a light rom-com for the Lovers Festival. Oh. Give, us Give us a song! song. song. I'm That's going song. to bed. We want a song. We, we want a song. We, we want a song. Fine. One more song. Yeah. Yeah. The mayor stands at a spotlight, looking out. The light slowly dims to darkness. Lights brighten and the company stand to take a bow. Thank you for watching. Rescuing One Sister in the Wind and Dust, adapted by Amy Ng, based on Zhao Panair Rescues a Sister Through Seduction by Guan Han King, directed by Anthony Lau. Panair, Elizabeth Chan. Yin Zhang, Francis Meili McCann. Zhao Zhu, James Cooney. Mother Song and Innkeeper, Lords Fabres. Scholar Ang, Sky Yang. Judge and Slacker, Kwong Lok. Ghost, Xu Si Hung. Ghost, Jennifer Lim. Mrs. Wang and Ghost, Crystal Yu. Written by Amy Ng. Director Anthony Lau. Composer and sound designer, Benjamin Grant. Lighting designer, Fraser Craig. Recorded and edited by Robin Fisher. Production manager, Daniel Palmer. Stage manager, Heather Cryan. Chief technician, Jason Wescombe. Lighting technician, Robin Fisher. Theatre technician, Fraser Craig. Production sound engineer, Michael Woods. Sound number two, Dylan Debutlier. Stage crew, Jamie Platt. Sound operator, Paolo Frecaro. Logos for Almeida Theatre, Arts Council England and principal sponsor, Aspen. <laughs>